Hi, I'm Chris, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about my new software release, Plug to Cloud. I'm going to cover what it does, why you might need it, and do a quick demo of how it works in practice. You'll find links to Plug to Cloud and also any plugins that I'm using to demonstrate it in the video description. This is the first of a few audio software ideas I've got in the pipeline, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything, and if you like this, hit that thumbs up button down below too. So, firstly I'll give you some background as to why this software is needed on the Mac platform. So part of the security on recent macOS versions is to protect the users from running software not signed by a registered Apple developer. Now, to be a registered Apple developer has a, basically a sign-up fee, which is prohibitive for smaller developers or just those just starting out. So I've come across quite a number of audio plugins that are unsigned, and macOS will quarantine flag them once they're copied to the user's storage. So, in the case of conventional software, the user experience of having to run unsigned software isn't that terrible. Because what will happen is you'll get a dialog box on first run, asking you to confirm, are you sure you want to run something downloaded from the internet? And then after you click yes to that, everything goes pretty much normally. Audio plugins, however, are a different and more complex story. Audio plugins, as you would know, run under control of a door. And as such, they don't have the same mechanism for confirming or agreeing that you want to run it. In fact, each door is different as to how they handle an unsigned or quarantine flag plugin. When I tested on GarageBand with a quarantine flag plugin in the system plugin folder, it actually froze up during the plugin scan on startup. With Reaper, it happens to handle it more gracefully and it will just fail scanning and not be available for loading. So this is where Plug Dequire enters the picture. Plug Dequire can de-quarantine audio plugins ready to be loaded into your door of choice. In this new version, Plug to Choir scans both your downloads folder and your system and personal plugin folders for quarantine plugins. It has also had a UI redesign since the first version. So, let's have a look at how you might use it in practice. So, after you've downloaded Plug to Choir, you'll want to copy it into your applications folder as per usual. So, as you might have picked up from the introduction, it'll ask you on first run whether or not you want to run software downloaded from the internet. It will probably also ask you if you want it to be able to access your downloads folder, which is a good thing, as you'll see. So let's launch that app now. And here we are. So let's just do a scan without having downloaded any new plugins. And bear with me on this, because I've got a couple of thousand plugins or so, so my scans take a while. Yours will probably be a little bit quicker, hopefully, if you're not a plugin holic like I am. And no quarantine plugins found as we expected. So let's say I'm downloading a, a plugin. So here's the recently released Bratwurst Fuzz. So let's download the Mac version. And there it is. Yeah, it's extracted it for me rather conveniently. So to demonstrate this, so what I'll do is I'll actually, instead of moving it to the normal system plugin directory, I'll actually copy it. So let's do copy. Let's open a new finder window. Go to the top level computer. Then go to the library, audio, plugins, BST3, and paste in here. And replace the one that was already there. Obviously this isn't going to be the case most times. Now, so now we've got one, a copy sitting in our system VST library. And we've got a copy sitting in our downloads folder. So if we go back to Plug to and do another scan. So what we'll expect to see here is we'll expect to see three results, which is exactly what we see. So there's one uh, in the system folder where we copied it to, and there's the two download folders. Um, and now if I select de-quarantine all, it'll do its thing. Rescan just to be absolutely sure that 
It did work. And once it finishes, all files are successfully de-quarantined. So let's just verify that that is actually the case. So here in Reaper, we'll scan for new plugins. And sure enough, the one that we, the one that we put in the system library is, is there. We add it, there it is in all its glory. So when you're using Plug to Quiet, you can use it one of two ways. Now you can either download it, run it, and then copy it to the system library folder, or you can do it the other way around, either way. So there's one other little, um, feature that I'll demonstrate. Now, there aren't going to be many occasions where you're trying to do de-quarantine a whole lot of plugins all at once, but occasionally it will happen. So let me show you a, a situation where that will occur. So Chris from Air Windows develops a lot of plugins. Um, he manages partly to do this by making them without having, deliberately not having a, a user interface, but they're very effective for, for doing what they do. So let's go to download the VST set of his and let's extract it and as you can see there's quite a number in fact 307 to be precise so same sort of deal I'll copy them I'll go to my system folder not vst3 though vst and i've got an air windows subfolder set up because when you're having 307 plugins it's good to be able to track them separately to the rest of them and so what i'll do is i will paste them in here and just replace all the ones that are already there like so, so now that copy's finished, let's rescan in Plug to Quiet. And it's got a whole list of plugins. So the, the difference here is because there's so many, I've actually got scroll buttons so that you can see all of them. So just click the right one to go further along right or left to go backwards. And then that will tell you a whole list. And once again, same thing. We can just click the de-quarantine button or files successfully de-quarantined. Good news. So let's give that, do the same thing again in Reaper. So let's add it in effects, scan for new plugins, and you'll know it. And there they all are. The scan was quick because it realized they were basically the same as they were before when I re replaced them, but you get the idea. So that's brought us to the end of this video. Let me know if you like Plug to Choir and find it useful. And I'll see you next time.